I went into the Marine Corps the day after I graduated from high school, June 10, 1965. I arrived in country about roughly mid-August 1967. My rank was Sergeant E5. When you first got into country, they refer to the first 90 days you come in. You're a newbie, and you're scared to death. So all you can think about is, am I gonna make it through this 13 months? Once you get through that first 90 days, you're not worried about, am I going to make it home now? You're there for the duration. So until you do it, you just gotta live with it. When you start getting into the last 90 days, now you're a short timer. You're back to the similar attitude you had the first six months. You're, you're scared, you're worried. I was out in the field 30 days and it got partially overrun and I knew I was go due to go home. And believe me, I was afraid. I didn't think I'd ever see my wife again. July 68, because we didn't have enough lieutenants or staff sergeants, I was still in the field. I was acting platoon commander for the second platoon. I'm sitting at the CP, the corporal came past by me and he was taking ammo cans back down to the machine gun. I'd see no more than a minute. He comes running back past me yelling, there's uh, gooks in the perimeter, gooks in the perimeter. So I took off running and went down there and I couldn't even tell my own troops. And I'm seeing guys dressed like Marines, they had our uniforms on, the jungle use, the helmets, the M16s. They were speaking better English than most Americans spoke English. And they're running down the trench line. So finally I sent a runner over to the third platoon to tell him that we had pulled back, we set up a line. So he brought his people back and eventually we became connected. I made it a point to crawl from one guy to the next. As I moved around from person to person, it wasn't so much a matter of just more than letting them know that I'm there, put a hand on their shoulder, give a word of comfort, tell them to just take it easy, you know, not to fire unless I give the order to fire. When they're laying on the ground, there's a guy laying over here maybe three, four feet away from me, so you can reach out and touch him. So everybody knew everybody could reach out. It's that bonding, we're all there doing it together, and there I am crawling behind them and tapping them over the leg. There were only two times in my entire tour of Vietnam that I was really afraid. When you're so fearful that your jaws is shaking uncontrollably, you cannot really show that fear to your troops. I had to focus on every word that I pronounced. My legs were like rubber, but I did it. They were my people, I'm gonna go take care of them. And they did exactly as Marines what they were supposed to do. And we did stop the North Vietnamese. Was I scared? You can't imagine how scared people were. I had a guy call me up. He said, for the last 40 years, I've had a voice in my head, a voice of somebody I've been wanting to talk to. He said, but that night we got partially overrun. He said, I was the first guy from the third platoon that tied up with the second platoon. He said, I had only been in country for a week. He said, I thought we were gonna die that night. I never saw my lieutenant that night. I never saw my platoon sergeant. He said, I heard your voice as you were talking to your people. He said, I took comfort in that. He said, I laid there and I listened to you. You were the only calming force that I heard that whole night. He said, for 40 years, I've had your voice in my head. A couple of weeks later, we had the reunion at Valley Forge. And here comes this guy walking across the room with his wife. And she grabbed me, she says, can I give you a hug? And I said, sure. She said, I want to kiss you on the cheek. I said, for what? And she said, for what you did for my husband. She said, my husband has talked about you for 40 years. He said, we have two nice children we've sent through college. We would not have had that if he hadn't come home. Can you imagine the impact of somebody telling you that? They've got your voice in their head for 40 years. That was one night of a Marine's life out of the 13 months he was going to be there. And he remembered me.